Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Morales. I'm here at the Heart Rhythm Society. I'm with Dr. Jonathan Salcedo, who is an electrophysiologist in the Palo Alto area. Dr. Salcedo, thanks for taking a few minutes out of time for this me. conference. So we're going to be talking about new things. We're going to be talking about changes and progressions for technology when it comes to atrial ablations. Now, you know, people out there, they kind of concerned, they well, well, ablations don't work, you know, they, or they know that people need multiple ablations. So sometimes people feel that it's not worth it or it's not going to work. But, you know, obviously we come to a big conference like this here and we realize there's new stuff coming out. There's always new research on how to do an ablation better. So, so what are some of the great things that you have talked about and have experienced, you know, that are new frontiers for ablation? Sure. Um, you know, this is an exciting time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been exciting for the last 10 years. And uh, the first thing I like to say is ablations do work. Yeah. That's uh, been proven. Mm -hmm. uh, our guidelines have changed mm -hmm. uh, to, to reflect that. And we're just getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, the technologies are getting better. The, the things we've seen here at the conference uh, so far are very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, from you know freezing power, RF power to electroporation, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. around the corner that will make this uh, even safer than it is, and it's already safe, and, and uh, my group has published about that. Um, we are particularly interested in high power short duration. Uh, my group has been doing it for over 10 years, along with a few other centers, and you know that that is just going to, you know, the data about that is going to keep getting better. Um, obviously, the companies are also catching up and starting to come up with their own yeah. technologies, um, and you know, the important thing is, is that it's safe, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we've shown that in, in our uh, a recent article, over 11,000 patients. Mm -hmm. Um, but with these new technologies, it'll be definitely more adoptable for everyone, and you know we are excited about that. And you know, when it comes to ablations, you know, pre history of recurrences, you know, I tell people, you know, despite the fact that we are intentionally trying to create scar tissue when doing ablation, the heart can be resilient. The heart can grow back. Sure. And to the layperson, you know, they may say, well, what's so hard about ablating? tissue you know but then you kind of like your point you know there's so many ways to do it you know and there's different energy types there's different methods there's different ways to do it and every patient's heart's different yes exactly their, their tissue qualities are different so you know there it, it is definitely not a, a simple procedure um, but it is very effective and we are finding ways to do this for everyone safely and to make their lives better to live their lives the way they want to mm -hmm. active um, and enjoying life and not on medications yes. that are slowing them down. Yeah, so. right. And that's the exact point that I bring up very commonly, you know, an ablation procedure works better than any medication to the, uh, control symptoms, keep people out of the hospital and live the life that they exactly. want to. What exactly. about people who are in maybe more advanced stages of AFib? Is there anything new that you have seen or in your practice that you say, like, you know, even for more advanced stages of AFib, we're getting better at this? Yeah, no, that's definitely uh, probably the biggest opportunity mm -hmm. for uh, for discovery. Uh, you know, we don't know. We don't have yeah. the best uh, you know idea. We just saw that the you know rotor mapping may not be the mm -hmm. answer, or probably is not the answer at this point. So yeah, we are still searching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we all do a little bit of different things for it. I think the you know, the best thing would be to prevent from going into long, right. long-standing, persistent, and and I think the awareness is getting out there, mm -hmm. and, and I think referring earlier, um, you know, is the better. Yes. You know, to see an electrophysiologist as early as possible. Yeah. Um, but for those that are are in long-standing, persistent, yes, you know, we are trying to develop ways to map it, ways to ablate it, um, and we don't have the answers yet, but it, I, I feel, you know, it's, it's around the corner as well. And that's something I talk about with my patients, and I, I think that when things will get better for these more advanced states of AFib is there's got to be a way to customize it somehow, because AFib affects everybody's heart exactly. differently. And no matter how long you've had AFib, it, your heart's going to look differently than the next person who has AFib. Right. So you have to kind of be able to find a way to figure out in that particular person right. what is the main concentration of AFib. I think that, that is the golden question yeah. that we're all trying to, you know, we want to make it patient specific. Yeah. Um, right now we are doing a, you know, a standard ablation set for everyone. And that's just, we know that that's a big limitation. Yeah. Uh, it works, but it's, you know, we're not, we're not at, you know, the, the success rates that we want to mm -hmm. be at. And I think finding that answer, like I said, is it's a golden question that uh, that will, you know, ad help us make that big advance, you know, next big advance in our success rates. Well, a lot of great insight here in, in the Harvard Inside Conference. Great things coming out. Great things for patients to look forward to. So, yep. Dr. said, thank you for taking a few minutes out of hey, your time. No Give worries. us your insight. Appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Thank you.